Hey, what's going on you guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Tom from Planted Aquaria and today we are going to be talking about easy beginner plants that we sell here at Planted Aquaria. Now this applies for all the plants I will be talking about today. None of them will require CO2 but if you do run CO2 they will make your plants grow obviously much more luscious and uh, at a faster growth rate, right? That's what CO2 does. I'm not gonna get into specifics, but just so you guys know, they will do just fine without CO2. All you might need is some good lighting and if the plants start melting off or having some browning on their leaves, you may need some fertilizers. And again, that applies to all the plants that I mentioned today. So let's get into it. All right, you guys, so the first plant we're gonna be talking about, I actually added two of them together, and that's because they're both considered epiphyte plants, meaning they are not required to be planted in the substrate. It is actually recommended that you either glue them to a rock or driftwood, or you can use a fishing wire to do so as well. These guys are super easy plants. They are also slow growers, and you'll notice a lot of these guys are really common in the freshwater plant industry, and that's because they're super easy, right? They're super Super hardy, really easy to maintain, and you really don't have to do much in terms of maintenance because they are slow growers. So every tank I set up, I usually have an Anubius. This is one of the few times that I actually got Busa Philantra in, so I haven't got to use those guys yet. Again, both these plants are extremely hardy. Water temperature should be anywhere between 20 to 30 degrees. Every plant usually likes cooler water, so just keep that in mind. Next up we have another foreground plant called the Echinodorus reni. This guy is in the same family of species as the Amazon sword, which I will mention later in this video as well. When we brought these guys in, they actually only had one red leaf and over time, new leaves started shooting up and it's only a maximum of, I believe, 15 centimeters, 15 to 20 centimeters. Over time, you'll even notice that the green leaves will end up turning red, which is pretty cool. These guys are root feeders, so you can plant them in substrate, soil. If you do plant them in a substrate, I recommend you may, uh, may, may want to get some root tabs just to help out with the growth over time. Other than that, they are pretty hardy, pretty easy, and customers that I've sold them to so far didn't seem to have much issues with them. All right, so now we're gonna move into the two mid-ground plants, and those are Cryptochorine Pechi and Cryptochorine Wenditi, if I pronounced that right. These guys are excellent mid-ground plants. You could get away with putting them in the foreground as well. They are pretty short. They are shorter than the Echinodorus rini that I was talking about earlier. Cryptochorines is one of those plants that are extremely hardy and easy. I'd say they're just as easy as the Anubius and Busa Philandras as well. These guys aren't epiphyte plants though. It's recommended you either plant them in substrate or aqua soil. Again, substrate, some root tabs would definitely help it out. So there's lots of different cryptochorines. Uh, we only have the two in the store and there are other cryptochorines that aren't considered mid-ground plants as well. They are much taller, but we don't have them here in the store, so that's why I consider these two as a mid-ground plant, because they'd look excellent in front of a driftwood or just touching up your carpet plants, right? Last but not least, we have our background sections, and I'm gonna be talking about one slow grower and one fast grower. The first one up is the Amazon Sword. These guys are extremely popular and almost every Aquarius knows about them. Um, they're in every single store I've been to and that's just because they're one of the most easiest, beautiful, tall plants in the aquarium hobby. They don't need CO2, they're really low demanding, but they are really heavy root feeders. I actually only had these pots sitting in here for about a week. And then when I decided to pull them out to sell to a customer, the roots were about two inches long. And you can see that there was lots of spread underneath the gravel when I decided to pull out the Amazon sword. If you guys want, you could add some root tabs. I usually don't recommend it if you have fish though, because these guys will just eat up all of the fish waste that's in the gravel already at the bottom, which you may have missed when you're gravel vacu vacuuming. One thing I actually love about the Amazon sword is that you might have a chance to experience a flower. So this one right here, the only one that we have, is about to hit the top and start booming. So that's pretty exciting. I've only seen this twice in my entire hobby, so or at least in person, so it's pretty cool. Last up on our list, my favorite all-time background fast-growing stem plant, 
and that is the Limno Fila Sassaflora. If you've shopped here before, you know that I almost recommend one of these guys in every tank for like every single customer that's asked which plants they recommend or that I recommend. And it's because these guys are super easy, they're fast growing, you can get double the size in about two weeks, trim it and replant them. Uh, I wouldn't recommend you add any root tabs, but if you do, it would really excel the growth a lot. Again, no CO2 for this bad boy. So if you do run CO2, you'll notice that there are red colorations to the tip of them. And, and without CO2, it'll mainly just look green. These guys could be planted in gravel or substrate. They'll do just fine in both. Oh, and these plants also provide great cover for like super nano fish, right? So uh, oftentimes I have a pea puffer at home and they just kind of hang out in the bushes there in the middle of the plants. So that's pretty cool. All right, and just before we end this video, I want to give a special mention to Stargrass, aka Heteranthera sosterifolia. These guys are extremely easy. Again, don't require CO2 stem plants so they can go in gravel or aqua soil. And because they're a stem plant, they'll take most of their nutrients from the water column. These guys are extremely bushy, and you can tell the nickname Stargrass. You can see how the leaves resemble from the top view almost looks like a star right so these guys are beautiful in the background as well and again super hardy super easy if you notice that your leaves are browning you may need to add some fertilizers but again that goes for every single plant in the store all right you guys that is it for today's video i'm trying to release a video once a week and i know quality does matter so i pulled out my nikon 3400 camera today so i can get a good close-up of the plants for you guys to view and we are continuing to bring in more plants on a weekly basis usually plant orders come in on tuesday and Thursdays same with fish but when fish gets here we have to quarantine them for the weekend they may not be available right away so I hope this video today helped you guys decide on some plants for your aquariums if it did help you you guys would be doing me a huge favor by clicking that like button below if there's any other things you guys want me to talk about in the store let me know in the comments below other than that I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one peace out